one of the greatest joys and one of the greatest uh, gifts, um, one of the most treasured and precious, precious uh, blessings that has been given to me and has been given to all of Jesus' friends by Jesus himself is his promises. And we see this with the thief on the cross. You know, he was, in the beginning, he was crucified alongside Jesus, one of these thieves. The other one was just nasty. They were both nasty at the beginning, but then one of them, you know, we call him the good thief, right? He's really the repentant thief. During that time where they were hanging there together, he he, he has a conviction, he, he repents, you know, and he becomes Jesus' friend. And Jesus looks at him, he gives him the same promise that he gives to all of his friends that love him, and who he loves, of course. He loved us, remember, before we ever loved him. Um, Jesus loved us when we were sinning against him, when we hated him, he loved us. This is so wonderful about our sweet, sweet Jesus, our Savior. But he's our dear friend, our brother, our, our Lord, our King, our Savior. And what does he say to the man? You know, he says, he says to the other thief, leave him alone. He says, we deserve to be here, but he's done nothing. And then he looks at Jesus and he says, Jesus, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says, surely I, I, I tell you that today, this day, you shall be with me in paradise. Jesus, the King, the Savior, the Lord, okay, our friend, the one who created all things. The Bible says, John's gospel says, nothing has been created that he did not create. In him we live, we breathe, and we have our being, the Bible says. He is the, lo he loves us. He died for us. He promises us things, and the biggest promise he gives us is the promise of himself. This is, this is, the, words cannot express, okay, the peace and the joy, okay, and the rest and the thanksgiving and the appreciation, all that, that I have for Jesus, my sweet Savior, my dear Lord, at promising that when I die, I'm not going to be afraid. I don't have to be scared. I'm not going to be alone. The Bible says, Jesus said, you know, to his disciples, he said to it, you know, he, we, we saw what he said to the thief, but to his disciples, disciples, which is all of us, but to his apostles, he said, where I am, you know, you may be also. I'm coming and I'm going to prepare a place for you and I'm going to come back for you that where I am, you can be with me also. He wants to be with us. We're never going to, when we pass, when we die on our deathbed, we're not going to die alone. Even if we are alone, like with no mortals around us, we're going to be with our dear, sweet Savior. He's The Bible says, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of one of his friends. Okay. Precious in the eyes of the Lord are the death of his saints. That's the scripture verse. He loves you. You're, 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 just think about it much more than your mother or your father. If you can believe that it's true. He's your God. He created you. He loves you. He died for you. He's the king of glory. He's the eternal one. He, you don't have to be afraid. God, God, 
bless you. Don't be afraid. Even if you go on to death to meet God and you die, you're not going to be alone. Even if there's no one with you in this world, Jesus is in the angels will be there and they're going to be there every step of the way. He's going to hold your hand. You're not going to ever be apart from him. Isn't that wonderful? People that don't know Jesus, people that reject Jesus, people that hate and disobey his word, they don't have that. They, they, they should be terrified, but they're not because the devil keeps them locked into pride and unbelief and hating God. But Christian, I want you to know what the Bible says, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I want you to know what the Bible says when it says precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. I want you to know that Jesus promises you, he promised you and me, all of us, his friends, the people that love him and obey him and are his friends, that where we, where he is, he's going to bring us, he's going to be with him forever. We're not, he's, the Bible says he's going to wipe every tear from our eye. He's going to be our sunshine. He's going to be, he's going to be our glory. He's covering us over with his blood. So that God the Father doesn't see any of our wretched sins and we're loaded with them. He's washing those sins away in his blood. He is making us holy by his own blood. And he's bring, he loves us. We are the apple of his eye. Isn't that nice? Isn't that more than nice? Like, nice doesn't even begin to cover it, does it? Do you have that? Do you have Jesus' promise? Tonight, when you die, let's say, in, in your sleep, you have a heart attack or a stroke. Are the angels going to be there or are the demons going to be there waiting for you to be turned over so they can drag you away to where, you know, to be with them because that's where you wanted to be with them while you were living? You listened to them. You didn't care about forgiving anyone. You didn't, you hated people, your own family. You sought vengeance. You didn't forgive. You didn't show mercy. You didn't obey the Lord's command to love your enemies. You even hated your family. Who's going to be waiting for you? You fool, you, you lecherous rat, you devil. Do you know Jesus? Do you? Are you, are you friends with the Lord who died for us and loves us and suffered, was rejected on our account because just out of just the fact that he loves us? He loved us before we even loved him at all. This is what love is, the Bible says, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, that while we were sinners, Christ still died for us. What kind of person are you? Are you a friend of his? Do you emulate him? Do you do you look like your 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 master and your king? And you you know he is your master and your king. You just you don't know it. The Bible says that one day your knee will bow to him. It'll be forced to bow. Are you going to bow to him as your judge just before you get thrown away into hell? Or are you going to bow to him now as your king and your savior, your lord? Your knee will bow. The Bible says that upon the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and earth and under the earth shall bow. And every tongue will confess, it will, that Jesus Christ is Lord, is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So what, what, what promises do you have? Do you have the other promises of God? The promise of judgment, of standing alone in your sins, without any covering, without the Lamb of God's blood covering you and washing away your sins. That promise of judgment, of eternal separation from God, 
Or do you have the promise of Jesus who says, yes, I do forgive you. I do love you. I know that you're sorry. I will come in. I will wash you. I will clean you up. I will take away your sin. Your, you forget about that. Don't do that anymore. I forgive you. I'm going to take that as far as the east is from the west. It's forgotten. I know you're sorry. You said you're sorry. Repent. Don't do that anymore. I love you. I wash you of that. Take away the shame. I take away the guilt on the cross. You're mine. I love you. Thank you for, you know, fixing it so that I don't have to judge you now. Thank you for, you know, accepting my gift and loving me back. Jesus loves you. Or are you going to basically give him the flip and the bird? You know, don't believe in him. I had one guy tell me, you know, I had many abortions. I, I, I knocked up six women. They all had abortions. What's the big deal, he said to me, Rick. Come on. What an evil person this is. I love him. I care about him. I told him that's ungodly. You need to repent of that. Are you one of these people that hates your daughter-in-law, you hate, hates your son, hates, turns your back on your grandchildren? Supports abortion, is involved in abortions, supports politicians that push abortion, murder of little babies in the safest place that God ever created, which is the womb. Are you an evil person that goes against God's word and tells people it's all right to be a homosexual, that it's the same as any other kind of love? When God clearly says, no, this is an abomination, you will not do this in my sight. Unnatural is God sets the rules. He's the one who created the world. He doesn't, there's no way that the Bible, that the Lord, it's just ridiculous. You tell people, oh, I'm a Christian, and they say, well, it's okay. It's still love. As long as I love, it's all right. No, it isn't. You love the opposite sex. You marry the opposite sex. That's what God said. It's not me. That's what God says. Do you love God? Do you care about what his word says? Or is it just like a religion for you? And you make it up as you go and you throw away parts that you don't like. Do you have the promises of Jesus? Do you know where you're going? I'm going to be with him. I have his promises to count on. I love him. I'm a Christian. I, 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 I love him. I confess my sins. I repent on a regular basis. As soon as I'm guilty, as soon as the Holy Spirit convicts me, I, I, I apologize. I go to the Lord. I repent. I make amends to people. I go to them and tell them I'm sorry. I, I keep getting up and, and, and repenting, and I get stronger in the Lord. What about you? Are you a wicked person that destroys and makes this world a stench hole? Are you the opposite? Class dismissed.